Hello everybody, it's Lime from LimeBricks.com. Today I'm going to show you some floor designs and techniques that you can use to improve your mocks. The first three are very similar, so let's take a look at those first. This design is perfect for a checkerboard pattern, which is what I use here. As you can see, it's made up of 2x2 two two tiles and it has a centre of a single 2x2 two two tile. It's just made up of these tiles that are all placed next to each other. However, what's unique about this is that they have the very small gap in between and it's also built diagonally which creates for a very interesting perspective when you add this to your mock. The way this is built is extremely simple as you can see it's just made up of 2x2 two two jumper plates and 1x1 one one plates and in between you just want to fill in the gaps with 1x2 tiles. I definitely recommend using all the same colour so that the cracks beneath all look of course the same colour, it could be any colour that you like and of course the checkerboard pattern itself could be any colour you like as well. So there you go, that is the first technique. This second technique is very similar to the previous one, however the main difference is that its centre is four 2x2 two two tiles. Now this can be very useful for the design of your pattern, you may want the centre to be four and not one if it isn't symmetrical and also it's very good for different sized mocks the mock that you want to put this floor design into may be a different dimension and this may work better for you but other than that as you can see it's pretty much exactly the same however what's different is how it's built in some respects the design of this one is actually even more simple than the previous one all you need is some 1x2 jumper plates and then you fill in the gaps with some plates these could be pretty much any size or if you want to get specific you need 2x2s and 1x1s and as you can see, you just place a two by two and then four jumper plates around it and you've got your pattern. It's very simple and very easy to build. This third design is the final jumper plate design. And although it may look very similar at first, as I turn it, you'll see that this is actually a kind of brick wall pattern. Each of the plates are slightly to the left or right and it creates a pretty interesting pattern. I'm not sure what you would use this for, However, it's very interesting to see nevertheless. This one is slightly more tricky to build than the previous ones. At first glance, it's not obvious what the actual pattern is. However, if you look closely, you'll see that there are rows of jumper plates that go across. An easy way I like to remember it is that it's kind of a zigzag that goes across. So if you just follow that, uh, it's pretty easy to do. Let's move on to some slightly more intricate designs. This technique is a far more detailed version of how I actually built the roads for my latest Lego city and pretty much what it is is bricks placed on their side. Now usually that's pretty simplistic but you soon realise that there is a lot of modified bricks that you can use to add all kinds of details that can be used in pretty much any style of build and on top of that you can just add so many little bits and bobs to it. For example over here I've used a snot technique to add a little bit of elevation. I didn't want to do too much with that, but that is something that you can do. And also I used a couple of slopes inside of this section to create some cracks. So pretty much just get creative and you'll soon find that there is a lot of things that you can do with this. Now you may be wondering how I was able to achieve the tiles on either side. This is just the right dimension that I can actually fit these two together like this. So if you're building a small mock similar to the representation that I made here. That is something that you can do. Let's move on to the next one. At first glance, this design may look very similar to the first ones we looked at. However, what makes this one stand out is it's very customizable. The grid pattern that you're looking at is made up of two two x two plates and a two x two tile. However, they don't have to be those parts. They could pretty much be whatever you want, which means you could really play with the colors you could add a lot of different textures and designs and the tiles that make up the cracks in between can also be changed out as well. So I imagine this will be very useful for some kind of castle build, I can definitely picture it in that. But you could pretty much use it in any situation, as you can see this is quite a modern looking one. I've pretty much already explained how this is built, you've got your 2x2 two two sections and in between you just want to fill it in with tiles, which means you're pretty much going to end up doing some 1x2s that go all the way in between and then just adding long strips for over here. As you can see that's exactly what I've done, I've just left out these strips and then used 1x2s for the rest of it. Now on the base of this mock 
you do want to make sure it's tiled as you can see because that will create a nice smooth surface that you can lay this all on as you don't actually fit these bricks down so make sure that whatever it's fit inside of whatever the mock is it's nice and snug so it doesn't move around finally in this design i've actually used two techniques one of the first techniques I used is one we've already taken a look at and that's just placing bricks on their sides and also placing tiles on their sides. You can see I used that for these rows here and then a little bit elsewhere but what really makes this mock stand out is the use of the cheese wedges to create a very unique pattern. I can't tell you just how customizable this is because you really can do anything with it. This is great for creating carpet designs or just very intricate floor designs. The one I've gone with over here is pretty interesting, it's basically these strips that go along and then I added a side pattern to get your eyes looking in all kinds of different directions. And uh, yeah, with the reddish brown bricks I think it looks really fantastic. I'd love to see what you guys can create with this technique. It's pretty self explanatory, uh, you want tiles underneath and then you just place all these bricks in, very similar to the previous design. So here's a visual representation of what I just spoke about. As you can see, it just comes apart as you would picture it to. It is a little bit fiddly to get the cheese wedges in place, but if you're working in rows like I did here, you can get it done pretty fast. And that pretty much does it for that design. And that's all of the designs that I have to show off today. Let me know if you want to see a part two, but that wraps up today's video. I hope that you enjoyed. For more information on this video and a full parts list for everything that you're going to need, check out my website linked below. But until next time, thanks for watching.